Hello guys and welcome back. In this video I'm going to talk about the echocardiographic assessment of aortic stenosis. Thank you for all your support. Don't forget to like this video and to subscribe to my channel. So let's start with part one of the echocardiographic assessment of aortic stenosis. You can assess aortic stenosis in different ways. However, I recommend you to assess aortic stenosis by following these three steps or categories. The first category is the visual assessment. The second category is the Doppler assessment. And the third category is grading the severity of the aortic stenosis. Now let's talk about each one individually. Let's start with the visual assessment of the aortic stenosis. Visually assess the aortic stenosis means to describe the valve in detail and to comment on the appearance of the valve. For example, look at the number of cusps. Is the valve tricuspid or bicuspid? Also comment on the pattern of thickening or calcification. Is the valve mildly thickened or severely calcified? Assess the mobility on zoomed views. Is the mobility mildly reduced or limited? Answering all these questions may also give you a clue to the etiology of the aortic stenosis. The second category to the aortic stenosis assessment is the Doppler assessment. Perform Doppler measurements according to the minimum dataset to obtain transaortic velocities and gradients. Also use the blind probe on every patient and calculate the valve area using the continuity equation. And don't forget to obtain associated measurements like ejection fraction, left ventricular wall thickness, and diastolic function. And the third step is grading the aortic stenosis severity. Once you finish with the visual assessment and the Doppler assessment, you can determine the severity. And conclude if the aortic stenosis is mild, moderate, or severe. You can also land in a gray area where you can have a low gradient, low flow aortic stenosis. But we will talk about this in the second part of this video. In all patients with aortic valve disease, it is imperative that they undergo a complete and careful echocardiographic evaluation according to the principles of the minimum dataset. In this presentation, I'm going to show you the specific windows and images required for the echocardiographic assessment of aortic stenosis. The first view you need to obtain is the parasternal long axis view. And in this view, you need to measure the left ventricular dimensions, the wall thickness, and the left ventricular mass. Then, perform a visual assessment of the left ventricular wall motion and a visual assessment of the calcification of the aortic valve. Now obtain a zoom view of the aortic valve and measure the left ventricular outflow tract diameter. This is for the assessment of the aortic valve area and stroke volume. Now perform a visual assessment of the aortic calcification and mobility of cusps. And look at the valve closure line. Think if it's either central or eccentric. In the same view, use color Doppler to assess for turbulence or for presence and origin of aortic regurgitation. Now let's move to the parasternal short axis view at the aortic valve level. Assess visually the appearance of the aortic valve. Look at the cusp's calcification and mobility.
Now obtain a zoom view of the aortic valve and visually assess the calcification and the mobility of the cusps. Also assess the aortic valve morphology, is it tricuspid or bicuspid and what's the pattern of fusion. Once again, use color Doppler on top of the aortic valve to assess for turbulence or presence and origin of aortic regurgitation. In this view, you can use M mode across the aortic valve. With M mode, assess the cusp separation and the closure line. Now let's move to the apical four chamber view and perform a zoom view of the left ventricle. Measure here the left ventricular volumes and ejection fraction. Visually assess the left ventricular wall motion. Measure the left ventricular wall thickness and mass. And if it is possible, obtain the global longitudinal strain. Left ventricular ejection fraction and global longitudinal strain are prognostic markers in aortic stenosis. Now let's continue with the apical five chamber view and visually assess the appearance of the aortic valve. Check the extension of the calcification and the mobility of the cusps. Now use color Doppler on top of the aortic valve and assess for turbulence or for the presence and origin of aortic regurgitation. Still in the apical five chamber view, use continuous wave Doppler across the aortic valve and trace around dense aspect of Doppler curve to obtain aortic valve velocities and gradients. These parameters are essential in the echocardiographic assessment of aortic stenosis. Now use pulse wave Doppler in the left ventricular outflow tract and trace around dense aspect of Doppler curve for calculation of stroke volume and aortic valve area. These parameters are also essential in the echocardiographic assessment of aortic stenosis. Now move to the apical two chamber view and obtain a zoom view of the left ventricle. Measure the left ventricular volumes and ejection fraction. Visually assess the left ventricular wall motion and measure the left ventricular wall thickness and mass. If possible, obtain the global longitudinal strain. GLS and left ventricular ejection fraction are prognostic markers in aortic stenosis. Let's continue and obtain an apical tree chamber view and basically you are going to do here the same you did in the apical 5 chamber view. Assess visually the appearance of the aortic valve, the extent of the calcification and the mobility of the cusps and if it is possible measure the global longitudinal strain. Use color Doppler again on top of the aortic valve to assess for turbulence or for the presence and origin of aortic regurgitation. As part of the assessment of the aortic stenosis, we need to use the PDOF probe or the blind probe. Use the standalone imaging and try all imaging windows including the right parasternal edge and repeat from all imaging windows to ensure maximal values of velocities and gradients are obtained. Now let's talk about the associated measurements for the assessment of aortic stenosis. First we have the aortic root measurements. From a parasternal long axis view, measure the diameter of the sinus of Valsalva, the sinotubular junction, and the proximal ascending aorta if possible. Second, we have the aortic arch measurements. 
from the supersternal notch view, measure the diameter of the aortic arch and descending aorta. Also visually assess the arch and the descending aorta and look for turbulence and aortic pathology including coarctation. Part of the aortic stenosis assessment is trying to determine the etiology. The appearance of the valve can give you clues in the etiology of the stenosis. Have a look at these characteristics. They will help you to identify the etiology of the stenosis. If it is due to a calcific disease, due to a bicuspid valve, or due to a rheumatic valve disease. I'm going to do a different video about the bicuspid valves. However, when you find a bicuspid valve, you should ask yourself the following questions. Is it anatomical or functional? What is the pattern of fusion? Is the valve thickened and restricted or thin and functionally normal? And you should assess the aorta at all levels to look for dilatation or coarctation. Once you finish with the visual assessment and the Doppler assessment, you can grade the severity of the aortic stenosis. Before grading the aortic stenosis, here is some key points to the severity. Aortic valve Vmax and mean gradient should be obtained in all patients undergoing the assessment of aortic valve stenosis. Aortic valve Vmax and mean gradient should be combined with the aortic valve area in order to describe aortic stenosis severity. And the effective aortic valve area calculated using the continuity equation should be obtained in all patients. And with all the information we have already obtained, you should be able to grade the severity of the aortic stenosis using this guideline for the assessment of aortic stenosis from the British Society of Echocardiography. Now I'm going to show you on a video all the measurements you need to obtain for the assessment of aortic stenosis. First obtain a parasternal long axis view and perform a visual assessment of the left ventricular wall motion. Measure the left ventricular diameter, the left ventricular wall thickness and the left ventricular mass. Use color Doppler on top of the aortic valve and look for the presence of turbulent flow. Also look for any aortic regurgitation. Obtain a zoom view of the aortic valve and visually assess the appearance of the valve. The valve here looks thickened and calcified with reduced mobility and aperture and the closure line appears to be central. Using color Doppler, you can see there is turbulent flow across the aortic valve. And at least in this view, there is no signs of significant regurgitation. Now measure the left ventricular outflow tract diameter. This is an important measurement in the calculation of the aortic valve area and stroke volume. Also measure the aortic root diameter. Now let's move to the parasternal short axis view at the aortic valve level. In this view, we are going to assess the appearance of the aortic valve. Now obtain a zoom view of the aortic valve and perform a visual assessment of the morphology, calcification and mobility. You can see this is a tricuspid aortic valve. This valve is thickened and calcified with a reduction in motion and aperture. 
Now use color Doppler on top of the aortic valve and assess for the presence of turbulent flow or aortic regurgitation. In this view appears to be a very tiny trivial regurgitation in the commissure between the non-coronary cusp and the left coronary cusp. Use M-mode across the aortic valve and assess the closure line and the aperture. The closure line is central and the aperture appears mildly reduced. Now let's move to the apical four chamber view and measure the left ventricular volume, left ventricular ejection fraction and left ventricular mass. Also, if possible, obtain the global longitudinal strain. Now let's move to the apical five chamber view and visually assess the appearance of the aortic valve. Always look for the extension of the calcification and mobility. Now using color Doppler, we can see turbulent flow across the aortic valve without significant regurgitation. Now use continuous wave Doppler across the aortic valve and measure the transaortic velocities and gradients by tracing the continuous waveform. This is an essential measurement in the echocardiographic assessment of aortic stenosis. Now use pulse wave Doppler in the left ventricular outflow tract and obtain the velocities and gradients by tracing the Doppler waveform. Now move to the apical two chamber view and measure the left ventricular volumes, left ventricular ejection fraction and if possible the global longitudinal strain. Now continue with the apical three chamber view and perform a visual assessment of the aortic valve once again. Analyze the extension of the calcification and the mobility of the cusps. We can still see that the aortic valve is calcified with a reduction in the mobility and aperture. Once again, use color Doppler across the aortic valve and look for any signs of turbulent flow or aortic regurgitation. Now, after obtaining all these measurements, how would you grade this aortic stenosis? In my opinion, this is a thickened and calcified tricuspid aortic valve with a reduction in motion and aperture. The forward flow was turbulent and mildly raised. The transaortic measurements were consistent with mild stenosis and we couldn't see any significant evidence of regurgitation. Thank you for watching, don't forget to like this video, subscribe to my channel and don't forget to watch part 2. Bye!